Hello, Internets. So time for a game rant about ideas that Republicans should strongly consider stealing from right-wing libertarians. Because right now, as it turns out, the Republican Party of the United States has a problem. And that problem is boomer cuckservatism. There is this running joke that a lot of career Republican politicians, often just right-wing in name only, are basically just progressives driving the speed limit. Whatever off-left economic policies or ridiculous grievance politics or cultural ideas or whatever that the Democrats and those to the left of them were pushing 20 years ago essentially becomes the boomer conservative doctrine as they cock to the left every 20 years or so. The punchline of this joke is that it's not really a joke at all, but the truth. Constantly cucking to the left and this strategy of unconditional surrender has unfortunately become the Republican norm. And since the US is a democracy, this creates a big problem, which is that the United States has effectively become a one-party state. If you want whatever the off left is pushing now, you generally will vote DNC. If you want what they were pushing 20 years ago, you vote for the Republicans. You ultimately have no choice for any meaningful or relevant reform that goes against the status quo. US citizens therefore can only choose how fast the car goes, while the establishment still gets to drive, whether it's driving slower or faster, in the end it ultimately does not matter. And so that's why I'm here to offer a solution to ending the boomer conservative problem in this video, and that is for Republicans to steal a few ideas from the libertarian right, or to be specific, the Mises Caucus libertarians. Everything I'm about to suggest here has a couple things in common. They would be very popular with the younger generations, so you might actually earn some votes out of it, and they give way to meaningful actual reform that puts the country more on the track towards freedom, as opposed to just stepping on the brakes and then not doing anything else. Now, the first of these is either drastically reducing or even outright abolishing intellectual property rights. I don't think general conservatives and Republicans really understand the absolute scale of untapped potential that is in this for them to gain an insane amount of votes from the younger generation from doing a total 180 and turning against intellectual property rights. And it would really catch people off guard because this is an interesting one that both the libertarian left and the libertarian right actually both agree with each other on, that intellectual property rights are basically completely insane right now, and both the DNC and the Republican Party have been basically dragging their feet to do anything about it. Current intellectual property rights laws are effectively written by and for boomers from 50 years ago. They are horrifyingly outdated for the age of the internet, where people are constantly exchanging data and information that could or may or may not be copyrighted millions of times per second. And yet copyright law has barely changed at all to keep up with it. Now, I don't want to go over every single argument for and against intellectual property right here, because honestly that would turn this into a two hour long video. Uh, what I will do instead is recommend anyone who believes that intellectual property rights should stay as they are, which is staying as draconian as they are, give a quick read of this article on Mises Institute that explains why you should be against intellectual property rights. But the TLDR version, the easy version that I will give you, is that the biggest problem is that IP effectively causes more problems than it solves. For every single instance you can find out there of the little guy having his work stolen by a big mega corporation, the reverse happens thousands of times over with large corporations and teams of pissant lawyers suing the little guy and each other of course over thousands of insignificant subjective IP violations and subjective patent infringements in a constant clown show of wasting money on aggressive and nonsensical litigation. And of course, total failure to update IP laws at the very least for the age of the internet has created severe problems. Members of Gen Z especially are constantly creating and uploading videos to TikTok or whatever, sharing memes with each other and whatnot, and then suddenly their video gets taken down or their favorite vine gets removed because of some ridiculous copyright infringement. Or people who are watching Twitch have their VODs silenced during various portions of their video because they were using some kind of audio that has been copyrighted, even though that that would actually, in theory, help the music creator, but I guess we just can't have nice things. There's actually a recent drama with a channel known as Magnets Media where they've received ridiculous copyright strikes on their channel because of alleged use of three seconds out of a one hour video or so, and those three seconds don't even look exactly the same. In fact, if you look into the drama, most people agree that the person who filed the copyright strike against them is really just trying to get their channel taken down for other alternative, less honorable reasons. And and this is all just talking about the internet for now, by the way. I'm not even getting into other problems with IP rights like expensive drugs and the problems caused by state-enforced medical monopolies that effectively contribute to extremely ludicrous rises in healthcare costs and insurance costs. Oh, and do you not like woke crap in the media? Well, guess what? Without IP restrictions, you could just take their stuff and then remix it with the woke crap removed and then redistribute it. The things we have to gain from abolishing IP, or at the very least, reducing intellectual property rights, 
is a massively long list. You get better media, better healthcare, better internet, etc, etc. Which on that note, I find it very interesting that conservatives have not realized this. Since the media is currently largely controlled by the left these days, you could even make a right-wing utilitarian argument against IP rights just as a way to wrestle power over the media away from them. This admittedly is not the most ethical reason at all to abolish IP, but it is a funny thing to think about. And even if you're not convinced by the whole abolish intellectual property rights outright, the fact that current IP rights are completely draconian really can't be debated. You also can't deny that it would make a lot of members of Gen Z take a second look at the Republican Party, because there's, there's actually a pretty funny study that showed that 57% of Gen Z believe it's better to support a local counterfeit product rather than supporting big business. So that just gives you an idea of how popular this is with the, the younger generations. And it doesn't necessarily have to be outright abolishing. It can be a compromise between the Mrs. Caucus libertarian position and the current conservative position. I mean, it could be something like reducing it from 70 years to only 7 years, and then creating some actual objective standards for fair use, rather than ha requiring every single instance of fair use to find itself in the courtroom if some intellectually dishonest bad actor wants to argue it. Oh, and yeah, don't even get me started on AI. Kamala Harris was recently put in charge of regulating AI. She probably doesn't even know how to power cycle her own router, and yet she's being put in charge of regulating AI. It's, it's ridiculous. Now, the next one is abolishing disparate impact and other DEI enforcement measures. Now, this one admittedly isn't extremely popular with Gen Z, but it is popular with Millennials and Gen X. And this is honestly something that most Republicans kind of understand as a problem, but don't really fully grasp where it's coming from. The basic problem is, is there's no way to actually enforce civil rights objectively. And so what the state came up with instead is the disparate impact standard, which is basically a legal standard which enforces anti-discrimination, not based on any evidence that a private individual has actually done anything discriminatory, but instead based entirely on ma unequal outcomes. For instance, if a private business does not meet a certain threshold in their number of insert whatever supposedly oppressed minority group here, they can actually be taken to court purely based on the fact that they don't have enough of that group in their business. Which is of course completely insane, because it has been proven several times, statistically and rationally, that disproportionate outcomes are not logically valid forms of evidence of discrimination. And this is absolutely ridiculous because the irony in that is that it actually forces said private business to discriminate. In order to prevent themselves from being taken to court over this kind of nonsense, they are thus forced to adopt some form of diversity quota or whatever, where they go through a list of various diversity checkboxes that they have to tick off in order to prevent themselves from facing frivolous litigation. In other words, an employer is thus forced to actually consider whether or not a person belongs to some kind of contemporary subjective protected minority class or not as opposed to seeing them as an individual when going through the hiring process. It forces them to take an anti-colorblind stance. And if you listen to any far-left bread tube rhetoric, they actually believe this, by the way. They, they think that this is a good thing. They actually will tell you to your face that colorblindness is racist, which is insane, of course, because if colorblindness was pushed to its logical conclusion, then racism would eventually cease to exist. And going back to Republicans, a lot of conservatives, unfortunately, incorrectly believe that all of this DEI stuff is coming from the private sector sector because they see it in the private sector. Well, in reality, DEI has been the law for a long time now. This has been a thing for something around 50 years. Boomers unironically voted for this to be a thing without realizing it. And the private sector and culture that we are seeing is simply just catching up to the law. The fix for this, of course, is that it just shouldn't be a law. Abolish it. Get rid of it. It's dumb. It unironically accomplishes the exact opposite of its stated goal. Which, let's be honest, that's probably their actual intended goal. And the last one I want to mention is one that would be more popular with Gen Z. And this is more of a thing not to do, and that is to stop falling for these ridiculous authoritarian internet regulation scams, which are never what they actually claim to be on the surface. The one I'd like to specifically bring up here is floating the idea of banning TikTok and the ban TikTok bill or the Restrict Act. Yeah, now, there's a great way to ensure that no one in Gen Z ever even considers vooting for you again would be banning TikTok. Now, on the surface, I can definitely understand why a lot of like general conservatives have this belief that this is actually a good idea to ban TikTok, and I'll even give it to you. Yes, TikTok is a pretty crappy platform. Most of the videos on TikTok are garbage and not actually worth watching at all. And yes, it is entirely possible for the Chinese government to gain access to TikTok users' data. Oh well. But you want to know what's even worse than that? 
the insane bill that was actually floated in Congress to pass in order to ban it. Now, if you were paying attention during the time that the Restrict Act was coming into focus, you probably kind of already know that it was revealed to be a very overreaching act. It was basically a very blatant Trojan horse for additional government power that most Republicans would ordinarily know as a very terrible idea. But in case you're not, there's a very good Twitter feed post by the Mises Caucus where they went into it piece by piece, and I'll just go into a little details on it myself right now. First off, the act doesn't just ban TikTok. It gives the US government the authority to basically ban anything that they don't like. If it would say, enforce any mitigation measure to address any risk to national security or potential future transaction, which basically means whatever the heck they want it to mean, depending on whatever benefits the government the most at that time. What are these threats to national security? Well, they're basically whatever the heck the government subjectively says that they are which considering our government's track record will probably translate to company A paid us more lobbying dollars, therefore their competitor, company B, is a national security risk and must be banned. This isn't a conspiracy theory, by the way. This is how the US Congress has operated in the past. That is standard operating procedure for them. And of course, if the government deems that you are a national security threat without any kind of court or due process whatsoever, they can basically completely strip your right to privacy, period, including right to encrypt your data. And it's not just foreign citizens, they can do this to US citizens as well, as long as they deem you a national security threat, again, without any kind of due process. Oh, and if you were to say, use a VPN to try and get around any of the things that the US government might ban with this, well, guess what? Using a VPN to try and access apps that you're no longer allowed to access can lead you up to with a $1 million fine and up to 20 years of imprisonment. So basically, the government can choose anything on the internet that they don't like, decide that it is no longer lawful, with no due process whatsoever, and then throw you in jail for trying to access it anyway. And of course, the effects of that is that it would effectively require the government to have the power to spy on us as we use VPNs and spy on whatever software we are using. So in exchange for China no longer spying on Zoomers for using TikTok, now the US government gets to spy on everybody. Amazing. Fantastic. Now, what does all of these additional powers the government is trying to grant itself have to do with banning TikTok? Absolutely nothing. And that's the problem. These authoritarian scams always pull the same grift. They claim to be one thing, but then there's a million bad ideas attached to the bill that have nothing to do whatsoever with what the bill was originally claimed to be. The grift here is that they're dangling a carrot in front of your face. You're like, oh yeah, you don't like TikTok. TikTok is cringe. Yeah, you want to ban TikTok. Well, just let us pass this bill and don't read what's inside of it. Just trust them. The point I'm trying to make here is that no, you should not just trust them. Every time Republicans do this, they are in fact cucking to the surveillance state which the off-left policies that they hate so much depend on. Republicans would do a great service to themselves by switching their stance on any proposal that grants the government additional power to one of skepticism by default. In other words, you guys should assume that when the government wants more power that they are lying to you. You should assume by default that when the government asks for a power to regulate with something in one way or another or whatever, that they are going to attach additional things to that regulation that you obviously would not want. Because the problem here with the Restrict Act isn't just the Restrict Act, this is something that the US government has done with bills similar to this all the time. For instance, remember the Patriot Act? Remember what an unnecessary grift that was? Yeah, they're pretty much all grifts. Republicans cannot in good faith claim to be a party of less government while continuing to fall for these obvious scams. And I guarantee you that every time a member of the younger generation sees a boomer conservative falling for one of these grifts, they are just going to run the other way and hope that the left has a better answer. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now. If you liked the video, feel free to tip, subscribe, like, and all that good stuff.